was just crazy. Let's get into it. Establishing business credit for your holding company and hiding cash. All right. We're going to talk about getting business credit with a business only. If you have a credit score of 700, 720, you can get most commercial business credit products. You can get lines of credit. You can get American Express, Platinum. But the thing is, it's dangerous to go out and get this stuff and use it when you really don't know about business. Uh, other day when I was on No Shay's channel, he asked a very good question. He's like, what's going on with the 90% business failure rate? And I broke it down. If you know your industry, that it's more like a 20% failure rate. Essentially, you have many people who are starting businesses who don't have a proper perspective, nor the background, or know how to sell. They don't know anything. They may, they may be smart, they may have money, but they're unseasoned. And this is one of the main reasons that these businesses go out of business. Or uh, there was a point that Damon John, Ashton Kusher, and someone else, they threw in seven million for this apparel company and it flopped because they thought that their star power would carry them and that's just not it. It's about audience and stuff, but we'll talk about that later. I'm going to give you the basics, the stuff you can find on the internet, and then we'll give you the stuff that you, you, you can't find on the internet. All right, so hold on. All right, these are the six things that you need to start your business credit journey properly. You need a holding company or your LLC, EIN, a listed phone number, physical business address, physical business address. It's 600 to $800 per year. It's well worth it because once you get your company growing, you follow these steps, you can get 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. In some cases, if your income is sufficient, 100K business lines. Now, this is something you're not going to find on the internet. $10,000 in the bank. It used to be five, could be five, but I would say 10,000 to be sure. Five to 5K minimum. That acts as a credit reference. Let me say this again. When you uh, have 10,000 in the bank, that acts as a credit reference. Now, let me explain to you why. We've gone over the numbers. We know that 90 some percent of the country, which is 300 million, don't have 10K cash in the bank. What do you think about that? 90% of the country does not have $10,000 cash in the bank. So that's really atypical to have that kind of money in the bank, even though many of your hustlers, many of you have that kind of money in the bank, but most of America doesn't. So that's why it stands as such a benchmark. And secured business credit from Wells Fargo. Uh, $5,000 to $10,000 limit. You can crank it up to twenty five dollars if you got the cash. This card reports to all business credit reporting agencies. This is the key with building business credit. You can go out and get Granger and you can get Kemper and you can get the Staples card if they still offer it. And it's you can get business credit in time, two, three years. This way, you can establish a robust business credit profile in one year, if you have the funds. Now, let's get into the particulars. Uh, list your number. Now, a lot of people know this. You yourself can list your number. You ever go to Yelp or some other place and it's like, hey, are you the owner of this business? Well, you know, there's one service, list yourself. I would just hit all of them. Uh, contact um, Verizon for their 411 service. I would contact AT&T, <coughs> I would contact T-Mobile, and I would contact 411. I would contact all of them. I didn't write them all down, but I would contact like eight or nine of them to make sure that your business is listed and listed correctly. Now, what you want to do before you start doing this is have a template 
and we're going to talk about an important thing that you can put on your template that you really don't see. Now, do this as soon as you get your AI in. Now, business address and phone number go to any office complex. If you have an office complex that's like, you know, maybe a building, they have 30 offices, go in, find a leasing company and say, hey, do you guys rent mailboxes? Most of them do. This is why I said 600 to 800 bucks because you can get one and you want a voice over IP service. And once again, this is going to cost you 29 to 60 bucks a month that this is the number that you're going to list in 411. Now, you want to keep this stuff forever. You don't want to change it. You want to keep the physical address. You want to keep you don't ever want to change this because once you go ahead and start doing this. And then you try to change it, it's going to create duplicates and it's going to be a mess. So be really, really careful. And also the one thing that you should do. All right. And you can have your voice over IP service go to your cell phone, but you cannot use your cell phone. And this is why. When uh, the FCC requires this, this is one of the things that there is a database of all phone numbers. And in this database, they nomenclate, they, 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 they assign if this number is a cell phone number, if it's a cell phone number with AT&T, if it's a cell phone number with Verizon. They already know what this stuff is because all these numbers have been cast into a big database and anyone can just go ahead and look. And that's why UPS boxes do not work for getting business credit, but they will work for a special purpose that I'm going to bring up in a minute. Okay. Now this is something that you want to do. This is the stuff you can't find on the internet. That's me with the blue, with my hair on fire, except it's a blue flame. Pick a permanent location. And this is your corporate HQ. While you're doing your listing, you want to put, something something coding company and you want to put in the annota annotation that this is your headquarters the corporate office some language like that to indicate to cast this notion that there's more than just that company because when you set up your holding company from that address you will have a subsidiary of your operating company so you're not even lying this is something that you never hear anyone talk about because they don't know how to do it. But you create this as your corporate headquarters. And when you are going for business credit, they're going to look at you a little different because it's like, oh, corporate headquarters. That means there is a subsidiary. That means that, oh, this is more than a one location business, even though it's just you and your operating company. Now, what you want to do, and I'm going to tell you how I did this with my UPS box. This is why you want to find a place. Even if you move out of state, you still want to keep this stuff the same way. You don't ever want to move this because once you start moving it, you create duplicates. Um, then when you're trying to get business credit, now like if you already got all the business credit you want and you want to move, fine, do it. But while you're building, you don't want to move. You don't want to change nothing. You want this stuff to be legit because, and you can't lie on your business credit apps. This is why I'm saying start your holding company. So when they go to the secretary of state and look, they're going to have the date that you founded that company. They go, no. And if you go like, well, we were uh, sole proprietors, then they may start asking for tax returns. So that's why you need to get started quickly. Uh, in the credit reference part, when you fill out these apps, just put in there as a credit reference that you have $10,000 in the bank. Just write that, write it in there. Money in the bank is your first credit reference. A lot of people don't know that. All right. Now we're going to get into the business credit blueprint. This is business credit that is developed in your company name without your social. Once again, this is business credit developed in your company name without using your social and doing a personal guarantee. 
So you want to go around and you want to visit banks. Do not call because I've never seen so, so much incompetence because you'll call and they'll tell you they can't do it or they just go into a, the branch, talk to the bank manager. Uh, if you got a job, take a day off, line up 10 banks, go in there and talk to them and say, look, this is what I'm trying to do. Do you offer small business secured loans? Because typically banks don't even want to mess with anything less than 50, 60 K. So a small loan is 10, 20, $30,000, which possibly you can get from your credit union. But you ask them that you make sure and you ask them like, okay, you make these loans. Do you report to DNB, Equifax, Experian? Ask them point blank because some of these banks do make these loans and they will help you get business credit with that bank, but they don't report. So make sure that they report. And so if they do all this, then you open up your checking account and once you save up $10,000, you go out and you get a secured loan for $10,000, which is like you give them the $10,000, they're gonna give you a check for 10 grand, put that money back in your account and just pay them out the money that they gave you. Uh, interesting thing with credit unions. I had a client do this with Delta Credit Union. Now Delta Credit Union, which is here in Atlanta, I don't know if it's anywhere else, but they do business checking and they do business loans and they do secured business, they do secured loans on the personal that do report to the credit bureau. So uh, if I can remember, I'll think to ask them next time I go in there because I have a personal account there that I don't keep no money in and you know why. So you put that 10,000 in the bank, you pay back their money. This is where the money management comes in. This is where the discipline comes in. And this is where the hustle comes in because that 10K is already accounted for. So you got to pay them back. Now, what you do is pay them, let's say the terms of the loan are 24 months, right? Most of the interest is front loaded. Now, what does that mean? That the, you, the longer it takes you to pay the loan back, the more interest you're going to pay before you start making principal payments only. So one of the things you're going to do is you'll make your first payment. Then you will wait and you'll calculate how many payments they will come up to 12, maybe 14 payments. Then whatever amount you need to leave in that account, you go ahead and you break them off a check for eight thousand eighty two, eighty three hundred bucks. So this is to assure that nothing funny happens and that you can pay your loan back and get that good reference. Once again, I know it's hard to save up 10 grand, uh, but once again, we're in the business of making your future bright. Now, if they do this, this is you open up a checking account. If they don't, you, you, re, you rethink that. Now, here's the business credit print, pimp. If you find a bank that makes these kind of loans, then you make that first loan and you pay it back and then you ask them. And this is why I tell people, you know, you, you should have cars paid off. Uh, credit unions, they'll do this more readily than the regular bank. But like me, uh, if I wanted to go to the bank and I just take my title out of my safe deposit box and it's like, hey, I want $50,000 and this car is the collateral. This is one of the reasons that you want to have paid off vehicles. This is, and let's talk about getting fancy and having nice vehicles. Uh, there's a discussion going on in Disruptive Mail with this uh, notion. I'm gonna do this video when I get time to show you the, the really rich people ain't living like that. There, you know, and I didn't get into it, but I wanted to gather everyone's opinion on what was rich because the vast majority of people we consider well off are in that 9.9%. .9%. And the vast majority of these people have a net worth of 1.5 up to 5 million. Uh, the people who have a net worth of three to 5 million, they're, they're knocking on the door of being rich. The people who have the 1.5, that could be you. You go ahead and you buy a house, you pay it off, you keep it. You get you some good uh, assets, some stocks, your business, whatever. That's you. 1.5, that's you. So it's a great bar to cross. It's a worthy goal. But 
I have confidence with the proper money management skills and the proper training in your lifetime. You can kick that shit in the ass. You can get to 5 million. I, I have confidence in you. All right. So once you make this first loan, then you do the car, you do the house land will be hard. A lot of banks, unless it's like something obscene, meaning that you got like two or $3 million worth of land and you want a $50,000 loan. They'll do that all day because they, they can't lose. Now, here are your credit references. And I should state, the last time I checked, Wells Fargo required you to have a credit score of 600 or greater to open up a business account. So you're gonna need that to get access to the Wells Fargo Visa. So you have your secured loan, you have your property loan, and you have 10,000 in the bank. So now you have four legit business credit references. And it's gonna take some work because you know, for you guys I know who are doing trucking, I know for you guys who have jobs, you got to start developing a relationship with your banker and you're gonna to have to do it a few times because once you get one banker trained, they're gonna get promoted or move on and then you're gonna get a brand new person who doesn't even know you. You know, this is funny and this is an off topic. I was in the bank and I noticed that the guy who helped me had a neck tattoo. He had a neck tattoo, he had a suit on, but I could see parts of the tattoo peeking up over the collar. And I said, my, 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 things have changed. All right. Now, let's talk about some esoteric stuff. One of the reasons that you should have this holding company is in case it happens, some people do win the lottery. If you win the lottery, you do not want to accept the money in your name. Let me say this again. If you win the lottery, you don't want to accept the money in your name. They're going to take taxes out before you even get it, so don't even worry about that. Um, and this tax rate is going to be the same. Now, why would you, you know, you, you won the lottery, you got money, now you can do some stuff. Why would you want to put that in your business name? Well, for, the, for those of you who have this uh, baby mama problem, if you accept that money in your business name with your EIN, let's say, and this has happened, a uh, guy won the lottery, he won like $120,000. And what they did is they took the taxes out. He was in the rears, and I'm gonna tell you how they figured that out, to the tune of 50,000. So they took the taxes out. They took the 50,000. She found out he won the lottery. She went to court. The judge put an injunction, so she got all that money. Because they were like, since he doesn't pay, why he has money? He So he's he paid in advance his child support. He didn't get none of that money. Do look like he wanted to cry. So if you're in that situation where you have arrears and you know, you're know you trying to get yourself together and essentially when you take the money in your name, they're gonna ask you for your social security number. Now, if you take the money in your business name, they're gonna ask you for your EIN number, which is generated off of your social security number, but your EIN number is not in the court system. So even though all that information is available to someone, if they were really, 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 really looking hard, normally it don't match up because they don't think that. Men are that smart, seriously. All right, so it protects you from angry women, it protects you from bad child support, and it protects you from people. Once again, I'm gonna tell you a funny story. I was getting into one of these Bitcoin battles on Facebook and this guy, and I, I said, I do very well. And he went ahead and he went to the Georgia Secretary, Secretary of State. He found my LLCs, right? But he he was like, you just been in business. But he, he, he did not read the articles of my LLC. He did not read the articles organization. Because the articles organization, because you know, when I told you that I took a million dollars and put it into this company, I had to have a million dollars to put into the company, right? He completely missed that and just acted like a, a crazy troll. So I, I say all that to say that even though it is public record, most people are too lazy, too ignorant, too stupid to look. Hiding in plain sight. I mean, it, it will crack you up because, 
in the paper, they're going to have to say, well, this entity won the money. And people are just like, oh, it ain't nobody. It ain't Johnny G. They lose interest. But if it's a person, the first thing they're going to do is go on Facebook, look them up, see if they have a connection to this person. Company? No one allowed. Anyway, this is a company. Because also with a company, you can hire an attorney to go collect your money. Now, I wouldn't hire an attorney. I would put on the suit. I would put on some glasses. I would uh, go in and say, hi, I'm a representative from such and such holding company. Here's my authorization to pick up the money. Here's my employment agreement. I would just fake all that stuff, give them the paperwork they need. So they would give me the check and boom, it goes into the company name. No one knows. So, and also this works for insurance checks. Now, once again, if you have arrears and they issue your tax return, they already have your social, so they're gonna look for that, and possibly insurance checks. Now, if you're in an automobile accident and you get a settlement, once again, you don't um, take the money from, you know, you, you just tell the insurance. Now, I don't know if this is going to be possible because if the insurance company, if it's your insurance company, they're going to want to reimburse you. But if it's another insurance company, then they're going to possibly pay your LLC. Just possibly. Hold on, I got an issue here. Uh, do, do, do. Boom, okay. So this is how, come on. Uh, let's see, there we go. All right, so that's one of the power. This is just one of the extra benefits of having a holding company already set up and in place because it can collect money for you Plus, check this out, all right? So let's say you're an independent contractor, right? And you get paid like the guy I painted my house. I paid him in a check. So let's say you have a company, you get paid by check, but you have them write the check to in your name, right? Not your company name. In your name, you can go to the bank, and if you have an account with the bank that the check is written on, you can cash that check in your name, even though you don't have a personal account with that bank. Or you can deposit that check into your business account. So, you know, I would, you know, if they go ahead and write it into your business name, so you have flexibility. Like, let's say you're in a situation. You can't put no money in the bank, nowhere. You start a business and then, you know, I mean, maybe you have to start like five different checking accounts. I mean, seriously, some people get in that situation and then you will be able to go to virtually any bank in town and cash checks and not put the money in the account, which will be seized or held. So there's once again, another benefit, a little benefit, especially for you guys with Heat mines are breathing down your back. All right. Now, this is some that I, I've never told anyone. And I've helped a few people do this. I call it the New Mexico hookup. You know, due to New Mexico law, no one knows who owns these LLCs in New Mexico, right? So you would have to fly to New Mexico. Now, this is a little different. This is just a, an account set up to hide money. This is it. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. So you create an LLC in New Mexico. You get an EIN. And you can use a UPS box for this if the bank doesn't get funded. Because once again, uh, banks are really, really on these physical addresses. Uh, PNC put me through hell. And I put down my business address, right, as my physical address, which was the UPS box. And they, these suckers 
they actually sent my ATM card and stuff to my old physical address. And then I had to get that sorted out. So be very, very careful with that. But you can create this company. You do, It does no business with anyone. And what you would do periodically is make deposits. But on the checks, you would write startup money, seed capital, um, venture capital, and make sure this money comes out of your W-2 account or your hustle account. And you'll just fill it up with startup money. There ain't no law saying, you know what, I, I, I don't really want to start this business. I'll just take my money out. So this is a way that you can hide money when, you know, if you don't tell anyone, no one knows you got money in this account. No one can find it. No one knows anything about it. And as long as you got the ATM card, you can pull money out wherever you are. You can use it any way you want to. But if there's like a major problem, you're going to have to hop on the plane and go down there to get it solved. Just to let you know. So that is it. So we're going to get into the questions and answer round. All right. B. Larkin with two member LLC. They'll need to provide a SSN. Yes, one of the members must provide a social security number. All the members don't have to, but one will. I will be handling financial and overseeing strategy, and he would be the face and the manager. So, you know, either one of you, because uh, now here's another little hiccup with this. Uh, Chase does this. If you have a partner, another member of your LLC, right? Well, they're going to make both. Everyone that's a member of the LLC has to come into a branch and sign a signature card. And one of the reasons they do this is because sometimes there was only like one partner who had access to the money. And um, those one partner will make off the money. So to make sure that everyone has access to this account, everyone has to come in and sign the signature card. Yep. Now, how do you get around this? Let's say you have a holding company and you have four members, you know, you, the wife, the kid, the kiddos. What you do is you create a second or third operating company in your name only. That's it, because what, what do we know? That the LLC money that comes here is going to flow up to the holding company. So just to get around that little gotcha, then you create that company in your name, then you go open up that account. So that's one of the ways around that. Uh, George Henry, no, you cannot substitute the EIN for S. No, you can't. Uh, let's see. Jonathan Rumley. Curious, in New Mexico, don't you need to create a whole... No, no. This is... All right, uh, uh, sorry if I wasn't clear. Curious in New Mexico, do you need to create a holding company, just an LLC, create a holding company, and just an LLC only to hide dough? Yes, this doesn't even have to be part of your holding company strategy. This can be just, quote, a naked LLC, but once again, no one knows you have it, you're not doing business with anyone, and you're just putting money in there as startup money and that you'll take out at a later date. All right, any more questions? Let's see, because uh, I don't know what the delay is on this. Let's take this out and put this here. Uh, George Henry, what do you mean, what if the partners are businesses? I don't understand that question. Uh, Richard Mayfield, save it up, hustle it up. So to save up to 10K is the best way. Yeah, because that's going to act as a credit reference. It'll be your first credit reference whenever you have to fill out these uh, credit references because, you know, business companies don't have a problem giving credit, business credit. <clears throat> like, oh, you got $10,000 in the account. Yeah, we'll, we'll give them a $10,000 credit limit, something like that. Uh, George Henry, what if the partners for the holding companies are you and another business? If 
that business has a human being attached to it, you gonna have to <coughs> bring that human being in. If it's another business that you own and you have no partners, you're good to go. All right, B. Larkin, cool. I will, I will try local bank for holding company in New Mexico for private personal holdings. Yeah, because once again, you, you have so many options here because, first of all, the fact that you're here says a lot. And, you know, we, we've been over the numbers. Literally half this country could not raise $2,000 cash in the emergency room. I mean, in the emergency. Literally 60 some percent of people can't do that. So the simple fact that if you just get yourself 10K in an account, get yourself out of debt, and start you a hustle, you'll be better off than 80% of the people in this country. All right, good, George Henry. Jack Bain, how long should I take the payback loan? Could I do it in six months? No, good question. You take the lump sum, once again, and you figure out you want to pay on it a year or more. I would recommend 13, 14 months, just to be sure. Because that's enough time to establish that as a reference. But you don't want to pay a lot of interest, so you just go ahead and hit that lump sum up after you make your first payment. Then in the same month, you just go ahead, go to the bank, and just write a check, check in like principal payment to your loan. Principal payment. Because uh, some banks are slick. If you just go ahead and put that in there, then they'll you'll go into your dashboard and it says you don't have to make a payment for a few years, which means they're going to soak you for interest. Don't play that game. All right. Pharaoh Phoenix, what are your thoughts on using registered agents? If you need to, it's perfectly acceptable. I am the registered agent on all of my companies because <clears throat> I'm around. So I really don't have a need for an outside registered agent. Myron Gomez, if you have a single member LLC and later on add a new member, what would be the best way to pay that person? Through dividends or split between wages? Uh, <clears throat> first of all, it would depend on what that person's doing and how much they're contributing to the business. So if this new person that you had as a, as a member, if they're working full time, you need to set them up on a salary through ADP or something. If they're like barely around, why even add them to your LLC? So just depends. Feral Phoenix, what's the best way to get distributions? This is the structure <clears throat> that I use. First of all, you must give yourself a salary. Small salary. Pay all the taxes that are appropriate on that salary. And then every quarter, give yourself distributions. Once again, assuming you're making a profit. This is what Christian Guzman does. Pays himself a salary of $250,000 a year. And I'm going to tell you why he does that. When he has to go out and get a house or something, he just provides his pay stubs. He doesn't have to get into all that. I'm a business owner stuff. And the 250 is such a high enough you know, income that pretty much he can get whatever he wants. Now, there's something I need to break down to you guys. Vendor credit. In the recent video, I was talking about factoring, which is a form of business credit that is tied to getting inventory. And I think my limit, because after the first one, they gave me 25K and then I went back and asked them if I wanted to get four containers could they do it and they say yes so my de facto limit was like 100 grand but this is very much vendor credit because i can only use it to get furniture i couldn't use it to get a car i couldn't use it to buy real estate and many people online talk about these folks getting these extremely high credit limits vendor credit 
without calling it what it is, because if you have, and this is why you need to have your personal credit straight, you could get a lot of business credit with just a 725 or, or you know, 725, 730. You can get that. And I would advise you to do that before you quit your job while you still have the ability to say, hey, you know, I make X, Y, and Z. And get all this stuff set up. This is what a lot of my friends did who had jobs to start their business. They went ahead and they got everything they could get while they still had a job. It's very, very important. Because for a few of them, it has been their It was there. It was there. Uh, I know one friend, he lived on his business credit for six months while the business was growing. <clears throat> paid his mortgage with his lines of credit. And he had to pay all that back, but, you know, the business took off and he was able to do so. What's up, Eric? Yep, I went to uh, one of my doctor's appointments. The doctor was surprised how well I'm doing. I uh, contribute that to working out before the event. So I got the, the clearance to start working out with weights again and get myself back together. Farrell Phoenix, what do you think about piggybacking other business credit lines that you pay to use? Here's something that's in all the language of any business credit that you get. And it will say something that if you're using this credit, not for business purposes, you invalidate the agreement. So if you've got business credit for three different companies and you're using the business credit for company B for company A, that may create a problem if you run into a situation where you can't pay it back because they're going to like this business credit is unlike personal credit because the lines are usually large. They will come after you. They will sue you. They will not let you bankrupt out of this stuff. So I'm someone that likes to keep my house in order and I like to keep it clean. I would not piggyback of other business credit lines. What I would do is get my holding company together and I would get the income of that holding company as high as possible to get the most credit lines. Because <clears throat> the thing is, let's say you have a holding company and three satellite or three subsidiaries. So you got A, B, and C. A and B are cranking, making money. C is losing money on paper to offset your taxes. That's how the game is played. So I would have all this money flowing up and all these losses flowing up through the holding company to get the most robust credit. Because the thing is, you know, you got to be very careful with business credit. Once again, many people are trying to use it as a substitute to poor personal credit. I don't advise that. <clears throat> Not at all. That can create a nasty situation as you go further down the road. But I think you should keep your house in order. Because let's say... You know, let's say you have four companies and they all have different business credit profiles. That could get a little sticky. Banks are really strange because let's say you've got company A, you know, and, and you pay from company C. They may refuse that check. It's kind of crazy. I've had that happen to me before. I wrote a check from my personal account to pay off a business account and they would not accept that check and they sent it back 
with the reason they would not accept it. And I had to go ahead and write a business check and send it to them. And that went through. Many people who are starting businesses who are it's going to be Monday, which is tomorrow's 21st, 22nd, the 24th. B. Larkin. Uh, B. Larkin, can a holding company fully own subsidiary and not control bank accounts? Absolutely. Now, here's the, the issue with that. You're going to have to, let's just say, your holding company owns the baby LLC. You're going to have to put yourself in the articles of organization. And before I do all this, I would check with the bank before I do it. Whatever you want to bank with, check with them. It's like, look, uh, I have a business, but in this company that I want to open up the checking account for, I am just a manager. Will that fly? Because I don't want you to, you know, because all these banks have different rules. Uh, PNC, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, Chase, no. Wells Fargo's weird. Uh, so you, you got to do some investigate because many of you are in locations with banks I've never even heard of. Uh, Fifth Third is super conservative. SunTrust is a pain in the ass. So definitely do your research and just, you know, and also when you go in there, um, put on business casual. Some nice pair of slacks, you know, they can be khakis, a nice shirt, button down shirt, and, you know, loafers if you like. <clears throat> that will make a difference. <laughs> it will make a difference. I know I know people are like, I mean, that don't make, that don't make no sense, but it did. Uh, Pharaoh Phoenix, is there a limit to how many credit lines should I establish? You should go for 10 to 15 trade lines. Now, let's talk about these trade lines. <clears throat> there are many people who are teaching you how to get business credit that would have you apply for the Granger, the Staples, and all this other stuff. I don't believe in that because you'll never use those accounts. So why have them? I would start off with the $10,000 and I start moving toward whatever I really want immediately versus trying to build up because the old way that you could build credit and I did, I did it this way was you would get the Grangers, you would get uh Uline, you would get a Staples card and these would build your early trade lines. And then this was when this was before the recession. And this is when there was a lot of financial products, you know, like the, Home Depot MasterCard, which I had a hundred thousand dollar limit. No personal guarantee, no social, nothing. This was through GE Capital. There was a lot of products like that. This was before the recession. So you could build up to that point within six months if you were on your P's and Q's. And there was a program that was going on with Ford Fleet where if you just had those three, you know, four references, a good enough paydex, you could walk in, ask for the fleet manager and drive out with a $50,000 truck. So the game has changed. And, you know, what I want you guys to do is the five checking account blueprint so you can have some money to get into some of this easier stuff because as we were talking about, you know, setting up your business credit in the beginning, you got to have a phone number that's tied to your company in 411 to get to the nice stuff. This is what they're going to look at. Now, if you're an employee applying for business credit for your startup business using your salary, that ain't a problem. But once you 100 percent, the business is going to get new business credit off proceeds or, you know, profit. It's a different ball game. It's a very different ball game. And that's one of the things that, you know, I, I preach. Get your business started 
start making some money because this works really, really well when you have cash flow coming in. Um, it, it is amazing. Like the portion of my medical bills that because the, the whole bill was like 300,000 and my portion is like 28, 29,000. And I've paid a lot of that and I'm still waiting because I'm still getting stuff in the mail. But you want to be able to cash flow your bills from cash flow to give you the confidence to keep pushing on your business. Because there's a, a lot of people who are teaching folks who, in my opinion, have no reason to have business credit because they're using business credit to replace their personal credit. And all these business credit cards come with the language in their terms of service that if these cards or the money or these loan proceeds are used for anything other than business purposes, this invalidates the agreement with the credit card company or the bank. You're going to see that right up front. And you got too many people out here trying to build business credit to replace poor uh, credit without looking at the foundation of what got them in the situation that they're in. You know, if you haven't got your basic uh, money management kit, go ahead and grab that. Um, everybody in Hustlers Kung Fu, you should have access to that. Get into the five checking account blueprint for personal, then go to a similar framework for your business because at the end of the day, it's just money management. That's all it is, is your ability to have money, hold on to it and move it around. That's really it. That is the key to becoming wealthy because uh, there was a study they were doing on people with money and the folks who had the most money were invested in something. It was either a business, real estate, the stock market. The folks with the higher net worths were invested and you got to make the money so you can invest the money. Any more questions? James Braswell, perception goes a long way. Yes, it does. All right, so I'm getting ready to close this down. Uh, I may have a treat for you guys tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to work because i got to wait on someone. So thank you for joining me tonight. I will see you guys Monday, and I might put in some extra content this weekend, and I will let you know via the email list. All right, are there any more questions? Pharaoh Phoenix, what are your thoughts on using tax-free or tax-deferred money market investment or retirement accounts as part of, of the banking strategy? I would not do that because, first of all, you got to understand that a lot of these uh, tax-deferred money market investment or retirement accounts, they're designed for poor people. You can only put in, I think, 5600 in your Roth and 5500 in your uh, regular ROA unless you have a company with a match. So we're not really talking about a lot of money. You know, if you know, you've got a robust 401k with, you know, 800, 900 a million dollars and you want to take a loan out against that, that's permissible, but to look at it cuz the thing is you, you should be pushing to make your business successful as possible so it throws off a lot of cash. That's the key because, I mean, think about this. There's this new, uh, let me find it. Earning. All right. This is to show you just how destitute most people are. This is a new app. 
you can get a hundred to five hundred dollars against your paycheck before you get it. And it, it it's just it's it's um these folks don't have basic financial education that you got to pull off a hundred bucks off your paycheck before you get it. Cause what happens is once your paycheck is deposited in the bank, earning takes the money back. And I think you'd leave like some kind of tip. You want to get away from traditional ways of handling money. You want to handle your money like a boss. Sure thing, Jeremy. Edward Coke. What are your thoughts regarding sign up for better business? What do you mean sign up for better business? I don't understand. Oh, that's a service. They want to charge me $48 per month. I don't um, know what that does. What do they offer you? Myron, yes, there will be a replay. I'm recording this now. It'll be available tomorrow. Yeah, because once again, <clears throat> most of America is financially illiterate. There are many people who can't explain a traditional 401k versus a Roth IRA. Um, and this is, to me, elementary personal finance, because the real personal finance is Number one, taxes, a personal finance strategy that doesn't take into account taxation is a piss poor personal um, finance strategy because taxes, I mean, they can take 20% of your money before you get it. This is why you got to start a business so you can get around that. You know, very few people address taxes. Uh, I was listening to a podcast and this guy actually said it. He's like, you know, your three big buckets, taxes, where you live and what you drive. And this is what takes up most of people's money. But this is where, you know, um, let's say you, you get into one of these whole life policies that right there, once again, is financial miseducation because you're putting your money in something that you may get a later benefit. There is nothing that will give you the power and the economic engine of a successful business. Nothing. All right, so it looks like that's the end of the questions. But, you know, we're going to get into some deeper concepts about the mindset of a business owner and the efficacy of business ownership. Because once you begin to understand that and deploy that as a mentality, as a lifestyle, things change drastically. Uh, Feral Phoenix, what are some other things that are not aware of when establishing and building credit for business? This is pretty much it. Pretty much it. Because, once again, if you have good personal credit, getting business credit is super easy. Once you get to the point where your business must provide the income, that's when they make you jump through hoops. You know, going to the top, you know, you want to establish a good foundation for your business credit, get a number in 411, get a unique business address, a real one. And, you know, the number that you may need for your business and the rent for your business location, that could be 120, 150 bucks a month just to have that stuff in place. Because uh, one thing that people don't understand is, there's overhead to most successful businesses. 
Imagine what Gary V is paying for all those buildings and those hundreds of people millions per month. So how many of you are getting started on your business credit journey? Just asking because one of the things, and you know, I'm doing this because this is a part of setting up the art of holding companies. Since I have a online business, all right, Farrell, Jeremy, Edward, all right, y'all are working on your business credit. Awesome. My business is a high cash flow business with a very reasonable startup cost. You know, it's probably takes me probably spend 12 to $15,000 a month on the things I need for my business, including advertising. That's very low. There are people out here with physical businesses with $50,000 overhead before they make their first dollar. So you got to look at this and this is why I'm pushing people to set up internet businesses and get that rolling. But, you know, if that's not in your wheelhouse and you need to start a physical business that makes, you know, a lot of cash, that's also very cool. All right. So I'm getting ready to shut this down. Uh, the replay will be available in Income Metamorphosis for the Hustler Kung Fu people, H undergrad, and for the folks who bought this. It, yours will be on whatever you bought on Hustlers Kung Fu. All right. I will see you guys later. Uh, just to let some people know, each Tuesday, 7 p.m., we're going to be doing a different training for the rest of the year, unless I go on vacation or something. But just reserve that on your calendar. And I'm probably going to start adding another day because I'm getting ready to get into the mental because it needs its own separation. It needs its own platform. So we're going to get into that. And for the H undergrad people who are paying monthly, you will get access to that training as part of your membership. So with that, I'll see you guys later.